Hi guys, welcome back to Geek's Bathhouse. I am actually in a moment where I just flipped on the camera because I kind of had a brilliant idea and I wanted to <laughs> record it for you guys. So I'm, I was actually prepping for today's soap. As some of you know, my boyfriend does a gaming channel here on YouTube and a new game just came out called Pixark, which is sort of a blend between Minecraft and Ark, if you're familiar with those, and he's been playing the crap out of that game the past two days, so I wanted to make a soap um, about that game as well. So we're going to be doing some little dinosaurs, and um, my plan is to make a loaf that kind of represents the earth, so we're going to do a bunch of different little, um, like almost like a confetti soap embeds inside the loaf. We're going to do the top in a green, we'll pipe on some grass, and this is where the stroke of genius comes in. So I was actually just doing the Minecraft dirt block soaps. If you missed that video, I will put a little link up in the corner of the screen. You can click the eye and check that one out. And this hunk right here is still soft. Basically, this is like soap dough. These are all of the scraps that I cut off of the dirt block. So I thought, hey, why don't I use these and we'll make some little trees to go on top of our Pixar soap and our little dinosaurs can be hanging out underneath all the little trees. So I just thought I'd click the camera on and show you guys this because I've never worked with soap dough before. It's something I've been curious about. And when I was messing with those scraps, I was like, wait a minute, I have soap dough all of a sudden. Let's, let's use it. So it's a little bit sticky. And basically I am just going to totally wing it here and try to form up some little trees. I don't know how much... I don't want them to be too big. I'm trying to think in reference to the size of my dinosaurs here. So these are gonna be, remember, we're just making trunks. So I'm just gonna form some little tree trunks and some branches and we'll see what happens. There we go. I actually might, I'm thinking I want the branches on there just to sort of act as like an armature underneath the um, the leaves so that I have more surface area to pipe the leaves on, but it, they, it may not actually even be necessary, but we'll, we'll do it. These are gonna look really silly at first, but hopefully they'll turn out. Keep in mind, this is just sort of the base underneath and then it's gonna be covered in leaves. So there's my little tree guy. I'm gonna keep working and make probably, I, don't, I probably will just make four of these little trees and we'll put one on top of each bar of soap. And the kind of cool thing is these are scented in green clover and aloe, which is a really sort of earthy plant-like scent anyway. So that will go with the fact that they are trees. Um, I have, haven't even decided what I'm gonna scent the Pixar soap in yet. I was still just, as you can see, I was cutting up scraps. These are scraps from the Batman soap. Remember these little Batman guys? Um, again, I'll put a link if you didn't see this one, but I told you I save everything. And so I actually cut up those to be some sort of rocks and confetti. I also cut up just some silver melt and pour that I had. Um, you know me, I try not to waste anything. So we are gonna use up all these little bits and pieces and create a new cute dinosaur soap today. So there we go, that's kind of the idea of what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna make couple more of these. I'll probably make a couple extras just in case and um, then I'll be back when we're ready to actually get started with the loaf. Okay guys, trees are made. I thought I'd pop back on real quick and just kind of show you what I'm making the confetti out of so you can see the importance of always saving all your scraps. So I have some yellow and black here. These are our Batman slivers cut up. I have some blue right here. Those are TARDIS pieces, little leftover end pieces. 
Um, these red and white and purple is the leftover soap from our 8-bit pixel hearts that I had just tossed in a mold, cutting that up. I have a Thor hammer here I'm going to cut up, and I also have an X-Wing fighter from the Poe Dameron BB-8 soap that has something else already stuck to it that's going to get cut up. So we're just going to throw all these scraps in, chop them up, and make some confetti. So remember, always save your stuff. Also, if you take a peek over here with the rest of the soap dough, I made some Harry Potter sorting hats. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll probably be using those in a Harry Potter soap coming up soon. All right, guys, we'll be back when we're ready to make the loaf. I wanted to mention to you as I was getting ready for all of this, I put on my goggles, uh, my glasses here, safety glasses, and there was a big smear on them I couldn't see and I realized that there was soap from my last batch on the outside of my glasses and that is exactly why you wear protective eye cover when you are working with lye. So I had my eyewear on, didn't even realize I got a splash up toward my eye and I am not blind. <laughs> I didn't get lye in my eye. So um, just thought I'd mention that, you know, safety is always important. Today I am continuing my experimentation with different recipes. This recipe is actually a vegan recipe. The oils are vegan. Now the entire recipe will not be vegan because I do have my goat milk powder in here as well as my Tussa Silk that was dissolved in my lye water which is also a product of animals. I'm just, you know, doing the best I can and experimenting with different types of recipes. So. The oils will be vegan. The entire recipe won't be strictly 100% vegan. We don't have palm oil in this recipe either. I am trying to work on finding a vegan and palm free recipe. So we're experimenting with this one today. It's still a lot of the same base oils that I use in just in different concentrations. This bit of the batter has thickened up quite a bit. It will of course thin out when we add our liquid oils and also I have some heavy cream back there. Um, as usual, you guys are familiar with my additives at this point. We have kale and clay, colloidal oats, and goat milk powder in here. We also had some Tessa silk in the lye water solution and um, some sodium lactate to help with hardness. And over here I have some heavy cream. Now I did calculate this recipe at a two to one ratio, so we are with a little bit of a water discount um, just to kind of help it set up a little bit faster. I actually had set out originally to do cupcakes for Pixar, and then um, everything happened that you saw earlier in the video and had the idea for the trees and I just totally shifted gears. Uh, so I had done that steeper water discount to um, help it thicken up faster for the piping, but that's okay. For our colors today, we're going to be using that bronze satin mica from Micas and More that you've seen me use. These are actually going to be pretty much the same colors we did in the Minecraft soap. The pea green, the, it's pear green, I called it pea green because it's the one that changes color and turns really brown for a little while. And then of course the pine mica from Be Scented. So my thought process here is we'll do the brown satin will be the base and that is sort of representing sort of the earth, the ground, and then we'll have all of our different colored confetti type additives in there to um, represent all the different stuff in the ground, rocks and lava and water and all those things. So we have some reds, some yellows, some blues, greens, that sort of thing. I have my fragrance oil here that I'm just going to stir in. We are using coconut lime verbena. I was thinking since we're doing a Pixar soap, it's dinosaurs, which makes me think sort of prehistoric and exotic, which makes me think of an exotic sort of scent, and I thought coconut lime verbena fit the bill. 
sort of tropical. When you kind of think of dinosaurs, you think of that rainforesty, you know, big trees and it gives me a tropical feeling anyway, so that's what we're going with. So we've got everything blended up. Now we're gonna add in all of our different embeds. Well, I guess they're embeds, they're confettis. So we've got the pieces from the Batman going in. And I'm not gonna add everything at once because I don't know exactly how much I need of each. We'll just mix all that in. Our base is nice and thick, so it's gonna Hope that'll hopefully help it hold these in suspension and not have them all sink down to the bottom. I'm going to err on the side of lots of confetti so that we have lots of different coloredy bits. Now, this may end up meaning that I have way too much soap for this mold. because all those little bits add to the size of the recipe. I suppose I could have weighed out all my bits ahead of time and accounted for that, but like I said, I was initially planning a cupcake soap and so switched gears. I did adjust the recipe size slightly from the cupcake recipe, but I had already had it pulled up on the computer in soap calc, so I just tweaked it real quick. In we go. That bronze mica has a red, reddish tint to it going on right now. Let's see. Oh yeah, I think we're going to end up pretty darn perfect here. Got that all banged down. Now I just realized that I was a little overzealous with my embeds there because I had intended to save some of the black pieces for some rocks and things on top. I may have to um, just put you guys on pause for a minute and go um, go and cut up a little more. So we're just gonna. I think I'm just going to mix these two together in sort of an in the pot kind of deal. They're already thickening nicely, which is good. Um, I think I'm going to do it into a clean container. Hot swirls are probably one of the easiest swirls to do, but they're also one of my favorites because I feel like you get a real um, sort of a fine swirl with them versus like a drop swirl that gives you very uh, direct different colors The in the pot kind of blends them really well. So we'll set all this aside. Get this back where you can see what's going on. We'll just pour a thin layer of this mixture right over the top. And I'm going to allow this to be not really smooth, but kind of the texture a little bit is okay with me because we want it to look like the ground. 
We're gonna give this a minute to set up so that it will support our little dinosaurs that I still need to pop out of our mold and our little trees. Our piping will set up and then we'll get started with that. So I'll be back in a jiff. All right, so the top thickened up enough for me to kind of get in here and do a little bit of texture just with my spatula here. And so I don't know if I'll actually need to pipe a whole lot of grass. I wanna make sure that I have enough piping for the leaves, but I am gonna do the grass first because I think it will be too difficult to get around the trees once I get them um, with leaves on. But I wanna go ahead and get the trees in because I want them to sit down in there while the soap is sort of soft still. So this is gonna be kind of tricky. I want to line these up so that I can cut the soap down between them. And I also don't want them to kind of get in the way of each other. Now I made four, but I think we're only gonna do three. Yeah, let me move this one to here. We'll plan on doing cutting just three bars out of this one and with a little bit of room to shave the edges, I think, is what is gonna work out best here. So there are the trees. Now I don't think, well, it's getting there. I don't think my piping is quite ready to pipe. Um, here are the little dinosaurs all out of the mold. I made them lots of fun colors because Pixar, if you have seen photos of it or anything, is all really bright, beautiful colors. So I'm going to aim my dinosaurs in toward the center so that when we cut that end slice off, the dinosaurs will be pointed toward the prettier part of the soap. Oh, little dinosaur. Oh, they're so cute. And each bar will be different. That's why I have different colors. Oh, this is tricky trying to get in here around these trees. Gotcha. And then I have one precious little purple one that came from when I did the cupcake soaps. I might squeeze him in. Might not, we'll see. All right, point you this way. Little dinosaurs. Oh, they're so cute. I like it. And then we'll do one more. This one we'll do an orange dino. I feel like the dinosaur should be walking toward the trees and I've got this all got it situated so that the dinosaurs are more walking away from the trees. Oh well, I don't think it really matters. There we go. Dinos are in. Let's see about some piping. Definitely gonna have piping left over that I can assure you apologize I'm trying to kind of concentrate on what I'm doing here it's hard to talk a lot while I'm doing this sort of precision piping here trying to Get some grass down around the trees. Fill it in there. We'll just put some little tufts of grass around. Oh, I'm really excited about this soap. Oh, that dinosaur now, his face is sort of covered in grass. We'll pretend he's eating it. How about that? All right. Now I'll get this 
last tree. Trying to get around the tree. There we go. Okay. Actually ended up piping grass along most of the top of the soap. I think we're still going to have plenty for all of our leaves. Now grass I have piped before. Leaves I have never piped. I have a leaf tip but I have never piped leaves so we'll see how that turns out. I have a coupler on here so that I can swap out my tip. I'll show you how that's done right here. So this grass tip for anyone who's wondering is Wilton 233 and then when you have the coupler on, move this soap out of the way so I can hold this where you can see. So I'll just unscrew this part and then I can take the grass tip off and put the leaf tip on. This is a Wilton 352 leaf tip. It's the smallest leaf tip that I have. I just have a Wilton like beginner piping kit that came with a bunch of different ones. So there's the leaf tip there. Now I've seen leaves piped. Um, one of the soapers that I watch all the time, Stacy from Yellow Cottage Soapery, love to watch her pipe. Um, she pipes all kinds of stuff and so I've seen her do it but this will be my first go and we'll just see how it goes so squeeze okay there we go not too bad oh look at that a little framework We are back to cut the Pixark loaf. It came out of the mold so easily. I'm really happy with this recipe just on that regard. It came out super smooth, no sticking or anything. So far this is the best unmolding I've ever had and this came out of the mold like 24 hours after we made the soap. So cutting this is gonna be really, really tricky and I hope I don't screw it up. I'm gonna show you if I can without, while keeping you in focus. This cut, hopefully we can make between the trees. This one, there's no way the trees overlap. I didn't get a good clean line between there. So we're just gonna to have to see what happens. I'll still, haven't decided if I want to just cut the trees or if I want to try to cut it with the knife instead of the wire cutter so that maybe I could turn it on its side and cut and preserve the trees. So we're going to try this one first. I'm going to try to, it might be easier to go this way so I can see the tree where I need to be. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay, here. We'll go like that. We'll go kind of around that tree. Just gonna have to bite the bullet and do it, I think. Alright guys, here goes nothing. Oh no! We're crashing into this tree. Hmm, I don't really want to back up, but, ah, what to do? Can we squeeze? Nope. All right, I'm going to have to, going to have to do this, and I really don't want to. Oh, man. Okay. What if we do it like this? This is so terrible, guys. This is tough. All right, I think. That is kind of lined up. No, not really. Oh well. Just gonna push it through. Cut. I'm damaging the grass on the top as I'm trying to push the loaf through. 
All right, that's not gonna go either. We're just gonna scrap it and cut it with a knife. I hate cutting with a knife because I can't cut straight enough, but I have to. And I'm gonna try to cut on that line. All right, so I'm gonna go back in right on my line here. Just try to cut straight down on that previous line as best as possible. There we go. First cut is complete. Oh, there we go. Look at all those embeds. The little dinosaurs in the tree. I'm really happy with how that came out. Alright, my camera battery light is flashing at me, so hopefully I can get the rest of this cut. We're going to do the same thing with the knife. That way I can kind of go down right between these trees, hopefully. These are really thick, chunky bars here. go. And there's the second one. Both sides came out so cute. I love it. All right, guys, here's the last one. This is huge. I'll probably trim it down. Let me just bring these back up where you can kind of see them. And there we are, Pixar Soaps. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, hit subscribe if you haven't, tell your friends, and share the geeky soapy love. Bye.